Good evening everybody and welcome back to the League of Europe YouTube channel for round number 3 of Season 7 of Division 3. My name is Aiden Carter, otherwise known as Commenters. I'll be taking you through proceedings in this division as per usual. And back in the commentary box alongside me once again, of course, is Jess. Jess, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing great, thanks. We're up all to Mal this week, just like we were last season for the very first time as well. But no excuses for the drivers. They had their first experiences last season. So expect most of these drivers to be a lot quicker and improve a lot around this track. Even though qualifying last season, I remember it was raining in Division 3. So I think we get to see the, the drivers' true pace today if it's dry and quality. But if the PC tier is anything to go by... The race could get interesting in terms of changeable conditions. Yeah, definitely could. Of course, this, this is a track that is quite famous for having wet weather. We've seen it quite a few times already in League of Europe and in other leagues as well across the board. Of course, like you said, new to the calendar last season. Second time we are back onto this track this season as well. Very, very popular amongst the drivers, of course. Uh, well... The, I mean, the signature thing that we're probably going to be talking about a lot when it comes to this track is elevation change, isn't it? It's a, it's a fairly standard track in terms of layout. It's got the medium speed, it's got the low speed, it's got the high speed corners, but the elevation change is what sets this track apart from others, isn't it? Yeah, it is, especially because it kind of reminds me of when the motorcycles come here as well. It's, it's a motorcycle mm. track more than an F1 track, and it's used, obviously, in testing as well. So it was used opened in 2008 and it was completed in just seven months cost 195 million dollars to make as well it's never hosted a formula one world championship event until 2020 because covid they needed tracks to basically fill the calendar and they said why not port them to be honest port them was quite good um when we when we first visited in real life and then 2021 was pretty good as well i think one of the memorable moments as well is uh um, uh, one of the safe, one of the safe, one of the restarts. Lewis Hamilton, he got caught napping. Verstappen was there to pounce and made a really, really good move with a tidy slit stream from Boas as well. And it, it was kind of like a, it was kind of like a duel between Lewis and Verstappen in Portimao as well. Uh, even though it's a track not good at overtaking in real life, we've seen in Lee Racing and in esports as well just how crucial it is to get an overtake in some corners. You can make it work at some places if you're brave enough. Yeah, you definitely can, like you say, make it work if it if you are brave enough. It is a track that does favour the brave. There's going to be a number of corners that we talk about tonight where this is going to be the case, of course. Turn 4, one of those. Turn 8 as well. Another corner that's really, really difficult. Elevation change, the drop down through Turn 11. And there'll be plenty of other corners that we will get to talk about this evening. Before we just load into qualifying, we're going to quickly run you through our standings after Round 2 of the season. And it's Tope and RJ level on points at the top of the standings. 33 points for the both of them took the two podiums so far this season RJ with a win in Imola and a sixth place finish in France J. Cole after his first win of the season jumps up into third in the standings on 25 Darry is in fourth ahead of Luco five and fifth Cam K Recurric, Alt Maverick, Rex and Noah J are your top 10 and of course still early doors still very early in the championship but it's good to see that already it seems like we've got a lot of different contenders in there. Tope and RJ have been consistent and fast. J. Cole with a dominant victory last time out. Darry once again, a, a great showing in Imola. Luke's been consistent across the season so far as well. So, yeah, a lot of a lot of people to play in this championship. And there's still a lot of people further down in the championship that we're still yet to see the best from. Yeah, definitely. And the drivers we got to watch out, particularly around this racetrack, are the drivers that did well last season in Division 3. One, of course, is mm. Brent, finished on the podium by five seconds um, in Portugal. The race was quite crazy there as well. And uh, obviously, Luke um, in uh, P4, who finished only three seconds behind Brent. So, expect to see the rivalry kind of come into fruition once again. Brent saying to me that Portugal is his favourite track on the game because it has such a nice flow to it and he enjoys every lap and he's having a bit of confidence going into tonight's race just like J. Cole uh, last week but but this time it goes for uh, Brent this week he's expecting nothing but a win today which is very very bold I think from, from Luke but he got a podium <laughs> last season so um, to be honest it's alright to have that confidence knowing you did well on this track last season so keeping our fingers crossed knowing that Car and Robin the likes of Car and Robin Brendan obviously in Division 2 now so uh it's really a lot of pressure for the Aston Martin driver at the moment, but a lot of pressure for the likes of Tope and RJ that are at the top of the standings as well. Definitely a lot of drivers to look out for, and obviously Brent as well, which who could get an 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 Brent and Luke that could get a possible win today. But we will see. Nineteen drivers. I'm very excited for this track. 
yeah, I'm definitely very excited for it as well. And just to make it that little bit more crazy, by the looks of it, we are going to have a wet, dry, wet race. Wow. That's interesting, isn't it? That is very, that is, well, the complete opposite to what we had in France, which started dry, then went wet, and then went dry again. This time around, it's the other way around. So that's going to make this qualifying session all that more important, of course. Qualifying, you need to be right at the front for the wet conditions at the start because it is difficult to overtake in the wet at the best of times. This track, despite its incredibly long pit straight, it is fairly difficult to overtake around this track. The turn one, well, down the pit straight using the DRS is one of the only overtaking opportunities on the track, and the braking zone for turn one is very very short so you need to get the move done before you've got to the corner turn five is another opportunity but the drs straight down towards turn five is quite short so you need to be basically right behind the car in front coming out of turn four to make any sort of move stick there so yeah it's going to be difficult for these drivers in the wet conditions but changeable conditions sprung up a few surprises last week can't wait to see if that does the same as well we're going to ride a ball with bunty he'll take us through a lap he'll be the first person to take us through a lap around portamau and just a quick word on bunty of course qualified really well last week was up at the front of the field leaning in the early phases but a late call to the intermediate tires put him out of contention yeah, I think so as well. Let's go on board with Bunty as he starts a lap around Paul Tamal. You're going to be heading towards the breaking zone of Turn 1. It travels downhill very quickly. The on Stroll's race almost came to an end there. Turn 2 is just about flat out in most cars. And then before the hairpin of Turn 3 at Lagos. And then we're about to approach another elevation change of Turn 4. One of the most interesting is very, very blind crest as he goes off a little bit. Just shows how difficult it is around this circuit. Heading towards another left-hand hairpin of Turn 5 at Toy Vip. And, and like, like Aiden said, pretty quite difficult to overtake, but you can make it work. Turn 6, it's flat out again. Bit of a roller coaster section as we head towards Turn 7. A short braking zone and braking into Turn 8 is tricky as well. The car is still turning from the previous corner. I expect to see quite a few spins from there as well. Now heading towards Turn 9 after the steep hill. And an extremely technical section of Turns 10 and 11 is important to make sure you nail those parts of the track as well. Then it goes uphill once again to the fast turn 12 and the left hand hair bin of turn 15, be, 13. Be careful on the outside of the circuit as we move the car back to almost the uh, right hand side of the circuit then to the left again as Lando Norris sets up and down side to side like a roller coaster as Bunty sets the first lap time on the board. And what's his lap time going to be for the Alfa Romeo? It's a 117.5 and then we got a Red Bull coming across the line to start his out lap and then we've got a few more people starting out lap as well so one driver set in the benchmark so far yeah one driver so far a lot of people coming out a little bit later suggesting maybe they've had a little bit of a tweak around with their setups to try and improve for the conditions the 17 5 is a banker on the board but we're going to be seeing pole probably a second or a bit faster than that so we'll see people dipping into the mid to low one minute 16s by the end of this session of course bunty having that big moment coming out of turn number four noah jay's just crossed the line but he invalidated his time we'll ride with rakurik in the house podium sitter last time out picked up a few penalty points for dangerous pit entries but maintained the podium which is good to see from the very back of the field of course so brilliant drive last time out from Rakurik in his first race of the season we'll see what he can do around Portimao then up to the line comes one of the Merc cars that's Jay Luke who does a 17-1 on the medium compound tyres and then White Hawaii goes two hundredths of a second faster and Rakurik goes just under a tenth faster than that so Rakurik on provisional pole a 17 flat at the moment on the soft compound tyres that's a little bit more competitive but still not the best we are going to be seeing this evening Miami who's reserving for old school this this evening he is in the mclaren today he's just crossed the line to start his first lap of the season in fact around this circuit so we'll keep an eye on what he can do this evening joint championship leader rj coming up to the line then the mclaren crosses the line and he goes into provisional pole with a 16-8 first driver into the one minute 16s yeah RJ. Oh. Oh, sorry to say that but look at taupe Tope, look at that he was a driver that's been mr consistent level on points with rj of course had a Brilliant result last time out as well, but I'm sure he would like the win. Obviously, he didn't get the win last week, but I'm sure Portugal is a track which he's kind of put in as well. We haven't seen what he's capable of around Portugal before, but seeing his pace already being about five or six tenths quicker than the likes of Brent, who is a, um, a Portugal lover, that is just absolutely insane. You can see why Williams are doing so well in the constructors. We, of course, have got to look for Dowry as well. In P9 at the moment, didn't have the best results last week compared to his teammate, but I'm sure he will 
bounced back. But we did ask the drivers about whether they were prepared for the changeable conditions. Well, there was quite a few people that loved them and there was quite a few people that, that hated them. Maverick wasn't prepared for them, but he made the best of it. Luke said the conditions were stressful, but was able to manage it. Jay Carl Course, obviously our race winner from last week, Loved them, was quick in the drive and even quicker in the rat. And we were speaking to him in the injuries, weren't we? That he was not expecting his pace to be so dominant in the wear because he had uh, a setup, I think, tweet for the dry. And Rekurik, who's obviously in fifth now, he was polled for a little brief moment. He said, anytime there's rain, he loves it. So yeah, he was prepared. And uh, Noah Jay, I I'm not going to repeat what he said because um, <laughs> it starts with S and ends in T and there's a few words in the middle. We don't want, want to say that. Passe thought it was okay. And Bunty was fine with the changeable conditions as well. And Brent is usually pretty good in the wet, but he needed to work on his tyre temperatures. So those were a few of the drivers who thought about the changeable conditions. Well, let's hope they learned from their mistakes last week. And with the likes of obviously J. Cole, who took the race win, let's hope he could keep up this uh, changeable condition form um, this week in Portugal. We had something similar in uh, Portugal all last night on the PC side as well. But it started off dry, then wet, and then I believe it went dry again. So, yes, I, it's going to be completely opposite. If J. Cole's up to the line, P3 for him, not bad, but still Tope is definitely the man to beat in this qualifying session. Yeah, three and a half tenths clear at the moment ahead of Miami, who's gone into second position in his first race of the season. But yeah, Tope's first lap, a 16-3. That is pretty ominous, isn't it? That's a brilliant lap time from him. Brent, though, just a, a word for Brent. His lap time in fourth position was on the medium compound wow. tyre, a 16.8 on the mediums. It's three tenths clear of the next fastest medium runner, which is J. Luke. So that is a brilliant time from Brent, saving a set of softs maybe for the, the dry part of the race that he may want to use them in there. So yeah, fifth place at the moment on the mediums. Brilliant stuff from Brent. And of course, the, the delta between the medium and the soft compound tyre around this track is about eight tenths of a second. So we could be seeing Brent towards the low 16s. He could even dip into the 15s. We'll wait and see. That could be something special if he's able to do that but Tope's right up there looking to pounce as well Marty's on a lap currently in the Alpine running a little bit out of sync with everybody else at the moment he's just coming through turn 8 runs a little bit wide but just about keeps it valid not the best exit from the corner though then down through turn number 9 and then up into turns 10 and 11 we'll see what his first sector split is he'll be looking for about a mid to a high 51 by the end of this sector and it's a 51.8 so that's pretty competitive wow. so far with the likes of Brent and RJ by that point in the lap so looking like this could be a solid top 10 time if you can nail this final sector these left hand side tyres will be screaming at this point in the lap there is so many long right handed corners on this track that those left tyres do start to cry by the end of the run through the final corner then flat out through turn number 15 and then up towards the line where can Marty put that Alpine he crosses the line goes forth just five thousandths of a second ahead of his teammate so the two Alpines yet again in qualifying at least pretty much inseparable yeah, and I see Rex up there as well because there's been some races where he hasn't been as good as well. So it's great to see they want to help each other in the Constructors' Championship as well. A few more people up to the line as well as we've got Jay Luke who invalidated. I think, not surprisingly, I think invalidated in Turn 4 as uh, Bunty um, is just about to start his next flying lap. Let's see who else. I think uh, we got one Alpha Tari who's about to start his fly. I think it's most people on their flyers at the moment so if you are wondering why Passe has retired from the session well Passe was a naughty boy last week and uh, caused a bit of trouble so that means he has got a qualifying ban for impeding Luke in qualifying so that's why he's not able to set a lap time because he was feeling very naughty so yeah that's why he's going to be last for those of you that are wondering I don't think we have any other qualifying bans this week just uh, passe so yeah he'll be starting last regardless unless people don't hook some laps together or retire if you're Maverick or Knight but it's Knight's uh, second race in LOE uh, this season because he missed last week and he's hoping for a better result than I think it was Imola La, uh, a few weeks ago where he, he, he first mm. raced and uh, he's hoping for a top 10 race results and he hopes he can qualify in the top 14 well uh, he's currently last at the moment hasn't hooked a lap together yet but we'll see what he could do in that Ferrari and hopefully he can get some points on the board
Yeah, it'd be good to see for the Ferrari man. Ferrari have not had the best start to the season. They're probably one of the stronger lineups after the preseason race, but yeah, not busy realised for them so far. Brent just following him on his first one on the softs. He's nearly half a second up, so this is going to put him right up there with Topa across the line, and he missed the apex of turn eight as well. So there is more time in this app for the Afatari who crosses the line and goes second fastest at sixteen point four one four, just under a tenth shy of Tope, who's going even faster, but not much faster. Only five hundredths up by the end of the second sector crosses the line to finish off the lap and Tope actually loses time in the final sector so that's quite interesting that well, of course Brent's improvement was found because he was on the mediums in the first run but Tope not able to find any time in the second run so far Miami's coming through the second sector split and Miami is only 700 a second up so a lot of drivers at the moment at least not finding a lot of time on their second runs from one soft compound to the next yeah, I think I've seen a few league races around Portugal where it's pretty much been exactly the same thing, where the banker laps are absolutely crucial. If you don't get a good banker lap in, it's going to be even tougher just to find a good Ooh. lap as uh, Luke. 162, the man who finished P4 last season here at Portimao, is definitely improved on his time to pole position at the moment. 162, about a tenth quicker than Tope. So that's probably waking up Tope's... Uh, uh, site at the moment and he, he needs to find some time to improve. We've got Rex who is just going through just a downhill section towards Toro Vip of turn five and uh, he's improved ever so slightly but again only slight improvements though so I think it's all going to come down to the final lap as we're heading uh, to turn 11 for J. Cole as he goes up the hill towards turns 12 and 13. Didn't see what his sector two split is for him but he's kind of sitting in P6 but, oh, as uh, he might have got a bit of impeded there from J. Luke. Uh, it might be investigated by the stewards. I don't know. But um, is there something that J. Cole could have done? I don't know. But that might compromise his lap a little bit. So that leaves it all to do on his final run, 116.4. Even though he goes two temps quicker, I'm almost certain he would have been near where Luke is if he didn't get impeded, unfortunately. But still, pretty decent lap from the race winner from last week. Yeah, solid lap so far. Both Aston's in the top four at the moment, so it's been a strong start to qualifying. Rex then up towards the line in the Alpine. He crosses and goes P5 on a 16.4 as well. So the times are starting to roll in. It is fairly close at the top of the field, just over three tenths of a second covering the top six at the moment. So strong laps so far. Bunty's gone 12th on a 17 flat on his second lap on that same set of softs. Of course, if it is starting wet, then that's not going to be a problem. So we'll wait and see what he can do. Jay Luke on his first run on the soft compound tyres in this quality session was actually down on his time on the mediums and has just dropped the car out of turn eight and has been disqualified for driving the wrong way that is how far off the track he went the game thought he was driving on the other side of the track so that is really really hard luck for jay luke who spun out of contention he'll drop right to the back so passe now won't be last on the grid it'll be jay luke last on the grid that is really unlucky for jay luke but yeah that is just the the problems that you have by spinning through that corner it can cause that kind of incident so yeah jay luke now down to the bottom and jay luke's luck so far this season has been pretty shocking hasn't it yeah it has he had a good end to the season last season had a win a few podiums as well um, including Brazil, but he's just not got off to the best footing with some mistakes and some incidents as well. He retired as well in Emela, so I'm sure he would want to recover. But yes, Portugal is quite hard to overtake. So starting last around here, not the best, but that's good news for Passe as uh, he is looking to uh, do not a last two challenge, but 17 to challenge at the moment unless Maverick could do any better. I'm a bit surprised actually that Maverick has not set a time yet because I was looking at the D4 results from last season from a few of our D4 uh, promotees to Division 3. Maverick was our highest in Division 4 to uh, I think I believe get a podium and he's only in 18th position so yeah not the best at the moment. I'm, I'm quite surprised he hasn't hooked a lap together actually but with the turn 8 and the elevation changes to be honest Maybe he's probably find it a little bit difficult. Maybe Portugal is not his favourite track. And I have spoke to him as well. Um, I think it probably must have been turn eight where he keeps spinning because he said turn eight can really mess him up. But it is a fun track to drive apart from that. So let's see if he can get a lap in later on. But very interesting enough, he's gone for a lap now with three minutes left to go. It's quite common to see him like this, but he, he, at least he has two laps to get going. But... To be honest, it is quite good because I believe it's going to be a wet start. So starting on worn softs, well, doing a few laps on these softs, 
Not a bad idea um, in Dowie's case, actually. Don't be surprised if a few of the other drivers do exactly the same thing just to make sure they're confident with the track. So, yeah, if it was a dry session, obviously Dowie wouldn't go out this early, but that's probably why Dowie is going out this early, because it is a wet start. Yeah, maybe the case as well. He's not pushing on this first lap, which maybe suggests to me that he's just trying to burn a bit more fuel. So he has as little fuel as he possibly can for the start of his final run. We'll wait and see. Luke has just started his final run. But just as he starts his final run, two cars come out of the pit lane, out of the way. Bunty keeps quite nicely through turn one. It's his teammate just in front. I wonder if his teammate might give him a little bit of a toe down towards turn five. Don't think so, because J. Luke has already gone through turn four. So that doesn't look like it's the case. And Luke loses the rear of the car through turn four. So already this lap has been heavily compromised. Yeah, he's a tenth and a half down by the end of the first sector that to me suggests that he's probably backed off of this lap and he has so luke's final run so far has not gone so well there is also a mercedes off on the inside that's noah j who's crashed coming out of turn one and hit the wall on the inside of turn two so mercedes qualifying session has been utterly shocking so far it's not been what they've wanted at all so they are now 14th and 19th on the grid at the moment knight and matt still yet to really set representative times knight is down in 15th at the moment on a 17.6 matt's just behind him as well in the Alpha Tauri, Knight's found two tenths of a second in the first sector, but he needs to find the best part of half a second just to gain a place on the grid at the moment and to get into that top 14 target that he was talking about earlier on. His only problem is there is a lot of traffic in front of him. He runs a little bit wide there and he's lost time in the middle part of the lap. He's not improving enough at this point in the session is Knight as he heads through the final part of the lap now. Not looking great. Of course, the preseason race he qualified towards the back and had great race pace, but quality pace so far not seeming really like it's night strong suit and Mats has backed off as well yeah so i wonder if they have time to go again they do have a minute to go of course but the question is do they have enough fuel or ers i'm looking at night ers he doesn't have a lot so this may have been night's last lap whereas matt i think he's backed off and saved a bit of yes he's saving a bit of ers now so oh as Ooh. he's fun and that's not going to have his tires any good at the moment uh, hopefully he gets to the line before the clock strikes zero for him as well. Let's just follow a few cars. That's Marty that he, we just went past uh, Matt at the moment. We'll see what he could do. Well, everyone seems to be struggling on their final few laps at the moment. So people that went out early probably helped them a little bit as well for some people. As Marty's in. Marty is in the pit. So that is it then for the Alpine car. He'll start no higher then P8 at the moment. Who's next across the line? We've got an Alpha Tauri. I believe that is Brent. Yes, it is Brent. Can he go any quicker? It is quicker. And it is pole position by two times quicker than his previous best. And two one hundreds quicker than Luke. That is absolutely insane. The checker flag is just about to drop as well. Final few people about to their laps. And J. Cole up to the line. He does not improve. And that's his qualifying session done. We've got a few more people setting laps. I think one of them is Ooh. RJ Luke up to the line, 116.2. So close between Luke and Brett. I did say they had a huge rivalry last season around here. Well, it's not really that surprising here as well. RJ's teammate for this evening, Miami, comes across the line. We'll see what he can manage as a reserve. Seventh place, not too bad. Rex comes across the line in fifth. Why, why, why? Could only manage sixth. We've got, I believe, it's Bunty. No, but it's not Bunty because he has invalidated. Mary comes across the line. MP15 is his teammate, can only manage 13th. Uh, Knight uh, has invalidated, so he'll be going into the pits. I think Brent is uh, down on his lap time anyway, and Darry is down. So, yes, qualifying is over, and by 17,000 of a second, Luke is on pole position ahead of Tobe, actually, who part a seller lap in P2. That is insanely close between the top three. Yeah, really, really close, isn't it? Look at that. 33 thousandths of a second, a third of a tenth separates the top three on the grid. That is incredibly, incredibly close. Then it's Luke on pole position in the Aston Martin. Two races in a row. It's an Aston Martin on pole. J. Cole, though, pole last time out. Luke this time around the man on pole position with a 16-2. Tope, once again, though, features at the front of the field in qualifying. Ever the consistent qualifier so far this season has Tope been up in second. Brent again up there as well in qualifying in third, but... Poor strategy choices really have compromised Brent big time in the first two races where he could have been possibly fighting for a podium in both of the previous races. Late pit stops have kind of taken him out of contention, so he'll want to iron that out and get maybe his first podium of the season. Let's run through the full qualifying order then. It's Luke on pole from Tope in second and Brent third. Jake or fourth, Rex in fifth in the Alpine. Then it's White or Y who outqualifies Rekurik this time around. Miami on his first race of the season splits the Haas cars in seventh, Rekurik eighth. RJ, our joint championship leader in ninth position ahead of Marty, who ran 
bounce off the top 10. Dowry would be the first person on the alternate strategy, but it's likely to be a wet start, so that looks like it might not be the case then. Dowry in 11th ahead of Bunty in 12th. Kamke 13th, Noah J 14th, Maverick, Knight, Matt, Passe and J. Luke round off the grid, but the last two on the grid not setting, well, setting times, in, Passe not setting times, J. Luke did set time on the mediums and then spun and got disqualified for driving the wrong way on his on his next run. So he is at the very back of the field, unfortunately. But that, that's a qualifying run through, Luke on pole, but yet again, Tope right up there in qualifying alongside him on the front row. Well, I figure your show is goes to show for Tope. Consistency is key for him as well. And he's more, more crucially ahead of his championship rival, RJ, level on point. So if Tope can finish ahead of RJ this week, then I'm sure he'll probably be leading the championship. But don't forget, there's still J. Cole, Derry, Luke as well. If Luke could get up there and get a win, he could be up there against the top three too. As it took a while for the drivers to load in to the, to the race session at least. But at least we're going to get underway so many petitions for this race when i don't know who what what's gonna happen but look at that oh, wow. rain it's not just intermediate conditions i do see wet tires in the mercedes mm. garage which strongly suggests it's not just going to be an interstart it's going to be a full wet start the first time i've ever seen that in portugal most of the races i've ever took part in or commentated it if there was a wet race it, it was entered so uh, this is a new experience i think for both of us this is going to be more interesting. And it's not just going to be raining for the whole session. It's going to be dry again. Then it's going to be wet again. So they've got to be on it. If they won rubbish strategies last week, they've got to be on it this week as well. But we, we just don't know what is the right strategy at the moment. So I don't know what I would do if I was them as well. Thank goodness I'm in the commentary box for this one. But yeah, it is going to be who has the, the best pace and also they have to have a compromise setup as well. They can't just have a wet setup or just a dry setup. They've got to have a mixture of the both due to the fact they'll start off wet, then dry, then wet again. Yeah, of course, you don't really know when the right time is going to be, of course, to pit for those tyres. I mean, we looked like it might, we might be starting on the full wet tyres, but within a couple of laps, it could very quickly change to the intermediates. Do, so does someone gamble on starting on those inters to maybe take out a pit stop? Of course, pit stops around Portimao are actually quite long. The delta here is about 24 seconds for a pit stop, not because the pit lane is slow, but because you're going past an incredibly fast pit straight. It's almost the same as Monza, pretty much, where the pit lane's not that slow or that long, but because the car are going so fast down the pit straight they are gaining so much to net time on you while you're sat in your box so it can be a very very long hold in the pit lane and you don't really want to do more than enough pit stops than, than you need to really for a race around here let's have a look at the tires for everybody and everybody is on the full wets as you can tell by the conditions that's not a surprise there is standing water absolutely everywhere and the last time i commentated on a, a portamao race that was fully wet like this it was psgl and fair to say pretty much everybody struggled to even make a single overtake in the race so Hopefully the changing conditions will, will change that for us. It is difficult to overtake around this track at the best of times. The changing conditions should make that a little bit easier for these drivers. But for the majority of this field, the first part of this race is going to be all about surviving. Yeah, so for Luke starting in pole position, he's in a perfect position because he doesn't have to worry about overtaking. He could just worry about what's in front of him and make sure that he could keep defending as well. And uh, it's kind of good for Tope and Brent as well because they're in podium positions as well. But if you're outside that top 12, that crucial points position, you're going to have a horrific pretty much start to the race unless there's trouble in the front. There may be people that can't even make it um, past turn one without crashing in these conditions with the spray that's going to happen as well with all 19 cars uh, here as well. We are meant to have 20, but uh, Red has not shown up, unfortunately. So he will be getting some license points uh, because of a no-show, which is a bit unfortunate. The, the license points do uh, rack up. If you get as many as season, you get quality bands, race bands, or even season bands. So, uh, yeah, uh, he, he, should, he pretty much should have turned up, to be honest. But I literally don't know who's going to win. But... With Jay Cole doing so good in the wet conditions last time out, uh, he is he is a, he is a favourite. But I'm going to have to say Tope was right in there, and he's in P2 at the moment. So I'm going to have to put my money on the Williams driver to win this race. I think. But with Luke and Brent saying it's their favourite track on this game, don't count them out. But we'll have to wait and see. As a few people got disqualified already. Cheese.
<laughs> yeah, not the best. The starting laps for those, that was Knight and Mats that got disqualified on that formation lap, so their tyres will be stone dead cold at the start of a wet race, which is the last thing you need. I'm looking at Tope as well. I think Tope in the wet conditions last time out, while he wasn't on the same pace as J. Cole, was incredibly fast himself as well, and being ahead in the wet conditions will be a major advantage, so keep an eye out for the Williams driver. A lot of this is going to be about how well these drivers get off the line. It's a long run down towards turn one. There's a dip, of course, in elevation change, and turn one does invite some sort of carnage in this race because it's a very fast corner and fast corner side by side in the wet conditions is well the last thing you need really it's going to be very interesting down towards turn one and turn number three as well but let's see how these drivers cope then it's luke versus tope on the front row wow what a start luke and Tope have jumped the start before we've even got going so our front two on the field have jumped the slides wow. that means that already brent is our net race leader here and rex with a good start gets up and past j cole into net into fourth position on the road someone has spun knight has spun at the back of the field oh marty has spun as well rj with a time penalty already around the outside of turn one on the first lap so he has obviously got caught very wide at some point on the track but we've had a few spinners at the back marty dowry and knight have all had a spin at the start of this race drama though our front two at the very at the very front after a great qualifying they've both jumped the start it was a very long hold to be fair i think they're just very eager to get going but what a shame for tope and luke to be fair they were they were on fire in qualifying and now they're gonna have to serve their driver within three laps or they will get disqualified but yeah, that allows Brent to have a little bit more confidence. Same with Rex as well. Rex has had a good start as well. Don't forget, Jelu started from the back after being disqualified. He's already up to 12 already. So Jelu has had the start of dreams in that Mercedes car. So maybe his uh, setup is more geared towards the wet because obviously it's a wet start and a wet end. So that's probably why he's chosen that. And that's probably why he's a bit more, more confident. Actually, the two Mercedes are actually having dream starts. Same with the two Red Bulls. The two Red Bulls are made serve at ground as well will any of the two in front choose to serve their drive through penalties early i would well luke decides to because he wants to get it out of the way with that undercut so brent is going to be the one that leads the field away heading towards turn one with tope obviously he's in the lead on in on trials we've got a few spinners already and there's quite a few damage as well Darry is in Darry is in our pulse hitter from him on that has had the worst start rj as well YHYY, obviously Luke with his drive through penalty, and Marty, who was the Alpine who spun earlier. So those are the ones who uh, needed um, a pit stop. That is not good because you will have to be early on the race. Look at this. Recurve trying to go side by side into turn five with Torre Vin in the wet. It could be free of rest with Miami and Bunty in the mix as well. Who says you can't overtake a poor man in the wet? Well, these three are proving that you can. Brilliant stuff from the hash driver up to fifth place already in this race cam is already up to eighth as well but he did say he likes the white conditions so it's not really a surprise for the red bull driver yeah not a surprise at all with the field after that first lap with all the damage that people Let's have got go. oh, rex has spun wow he's dropped the car through turn number nine that's a virtual safety car for rex's car my my it would have been in a net second position but he's dropped the car in a corner that in the dry you don't think about in the wet you've got to treat it as a proper corner clearly he's not he's dropped the car and that's him out of the race before lap two is over what a shame what that also means as well is tope cannot serve his drive through here because it's a virtual safety car he's going to have to wait another lap to serve that drive through penalty he is flying at the front of the field is tope but it's all going to count for nothing at the moment brent will take the net race lead but look at the gap he'll have to j cole after two laps i said before that wreck spin because there was so much damage for drivers on that first lap and everybody was holding each other up the field has completely strung out it looks like it's lap 30 of a race it's lap three look at how spread out the field is you've got brent in a net lead of about two seconds marty's crashed in exactly the same spot oh, no. just a lap later so both alpines out at the same corner in the same fashion that is a disaster for alpine after a strong qualifying for rex he is out marty as well after a horrible start retires from the race look at how spread out the field is after just two laps in this race i mean passe who started at the back is 11th but he's three and a half seconds off the car in front well to be fair i think from the way this is going you could probably tell that most of these drivers have not practiced for the wet you can tell who has practiced for the wet and who hasn't by the way this field is spread out so hopefully this will be lesson learned when we head to the austria i believe next week so 
Yeah, Topo. Well, I think we'll have to come in. I would say now. If he doesn't come in now, yeah. he will get disqualified. He uh, did have a bit of breathing room, and this is going to be allowing the loop to be miles ahead of Tope due to that massive undercut for getting that drive through done earlier. I don't know why Tope didn't go in with him because there could have been loads of trouble and understanding water and Portugal plus elevation changes do not mix. As Tope comes in to serve his drive through that promotes Brent to the race lead of the race and that is a huge gap that Brent and just look at the pace Brent is showing. It's like he's on the intermediate condition. Same with J. Cole as well. J. Cole is catching on those sets of full wets the top two is a class of their own as well. With Kerbig as well starting to catch up. Miami too. Bunty as well. Cam's up to six. J Luke's up to seventh. You could definitely tell who's made for the wet here today. Yeah, you definitely can. J Luke from being disqualified in qualifying and starting this race in 19th is seventh after three laps in a wet race. I don't think he expected that at all. Was now Bunty the next man to get past Miami? Miami's struggling in these conditions. Rakuric got him past him two laps ago. Bunty the next person through. Bunty, of course, was fast in the wet conditions in France as well, but of course pitted too late for the intermediate tyres in those conditions and could never recover before eventually retiring. So he is again showing his speed in the wet conditions up to fourth place in the Alfa Romeo, the Sao Alfa Romeo in this race. Cam K will be the next person to maybe have a run at Miami who is struggling. Jay looks right there. Maverick as well in eight is right there. Noah J ninth and Passe at the moment rounding off the top 10 with Matson Knight, the last two in the point scoring positions. Tope then 13th did still come out ahead of Luke. The gap 2.3 seconds. So Tope is still ahead of the Aston Martin after that drive through penalty suggesting Tope is the faster of the two at the moment. But now they are out of the points with no DRS to help them overtake. It's going to be a long old race for Tope and Luke. They're going to hope that they absolutely nail when they pit for different tyres. Brent leads but J. Cole has taken a second out of Brent on this lap. Yet again, in the wet conditions, J. Cole is absolutely flying, and that proves it. A 30.1. Wow. That is a second faster than Brent. That is absolutely insane. Well, I think J. Cole was hoping there will be similar conditions to last week. Uh, you know, I think it's just showing that J. Cole is kind of like a god in terms of the wet conditions in this division this <laughs> season. And he's, he's probably relieved. And I've just noticed as well... The, the rain is getting lighter. Even though it's standing water, that, that means you have to stay on the four wets. It's definitely lighter than it was at the start of the race. So maybe people will be thinking about inters, or will people be brave enough to stay on the four wets oh. until the dry period as we've got a yellow flag? That is Luke, Luke I believe, because it can't be J. Cole, I'm on board with him. As uh, Luke has spun it in turn four, so easy to do in the dry, even easier to do in the wet. So, uh, and he's got, obviously, got a penalty down into 14th position. RJ's down into 6 deep as well. He's had a bit of a trouble moment in this race so far. J. Cole, 5 tenths. Brent almost gone wide a little bit. This is J. Cole's opportunity to pounce as they head towards 11, 12 and turn 13. Can he send for a late move on the left-hand side? The track's getting more grippier. Surely not. This is the hardest move to overtake on in this circuit. If J. Cole can actually send it up the right-hand side into this final few corners. That'll be insane to make a little bit of contact. I think Jacob will probably decide to back out. He's going to move to the right-hand side a little bit. Oh, this is going to be brilliant if Jacob can nail this. Oh, my God, he does. As a break goes does. into the pit. I wonder if Brent is going for the gamble and going for the intermediate tires. I can't see why he is uh, pitted unless he got a bit of damage from that contact, which I don't think he did. So let's watch... Uh, Brent Inters, pit yeah. stopped. Inters, yeah. Uh, it is getting lighter. It's going to be difficult with the standing water, but we'll see if the gamble has paid off for Brent or not. We'll keep an eye on his lap times at the moment. But J. Cole is trying to stay out. I think he would have got the move done anyway, um, the way he was going. Yeah, he definitely would have got the move done, but it seemed to me that, that, that uh, in that situation at least that Brent was really struggling on those wet tyres. He seemed to be overheating those wets. And by the time you're overheating the wets, you know it's time for intermediate conditions. So Brent on to the Inters. We'll see what his pace is and whether he can then undercut J. Cole. Uh, another person that went wide was Bunty. Bunty had a moment through turn number 13 and has allowed Miami back through and got a time penalty for his troubles as well, has the Alfa Romeo. So Miami up into a net third. It's J. Cole leading from Rakurik. Where have I seen this before? What the, what, it's almost like deja vu, isn't it, from last time out. J. Cole leads Rakurik in the wet condition strong as well in second place in the Haas ever the consistent driver is that Haas man he's maybe not the fastest but he can work his way through carnage and get solid results Miami on the final podium step at the moment Bunty just behind Joe Luke's now up to fifth 
What a race this has wow. been for Jay Luke so far. We're only six laps in and he's gone from 19th to 5th. This is a turnaround in Fortune so far at least for the Mercedes man. J. Cole is into the pit lane. No surprise there. Rakurik has followed him in. in. Yeah, they're all coming in. No. Oh, Bunty's staying out. And so is J. Luke. So, wow. Again, for the second race in a row, Bunty's staying out a lap longer. Both Mercs, interestingly, have stayed out. So neither one of them have come in. Maverick's come in, understandably, because Kamke came in. So he can't react and double sat behind his teammate. Passe's in. Mats is in as well. Tope is in. We'll see where Brent is in relation to J. Cole. Of course, J. Cole had just got the move done on Brent. Brent, though, gonna is going to sail yeah, sail back past. He's well back through. The Inters are definitely the tire to be on. I think Bunty and J-Lo have been caught out here. Yeah, they probably made the wrong decision, but I just have to point out um, Bunty and J-Lo's lap times for a minute. They're around about five or six temps slower than the leader. It's not, it's not much. It's not much at all. They're so quick. And I think the bottom half as well, they are pretty much a similar pace looking at fastest laps. So this is a nail-biting field in terms of those intermediate conditions the lap time they're going to begin to tumble a little bit more and start to increase on the gap as well as Bunty you can see struggling through uh, turn 10 and um, 11 there so I think J Luke is uh, uh, going to try and go for a move towards turn 12 and 13 he does not and already I'm just looking at the pit lane also uh, as well Brent is going to be well ahead J Cole is going to be well ahead of the top four of yet to be. Obviously, Mavic had no choice because of his teammate, but everybody else was caught napping and realised, uh-oh, I should have gone in to the pits. Maybe they weren't told, though, but sometimes you've got to use your judgment and ignore Jeff. 24 seconds is the gap uh, for the pit stop as Bunty and J-Lug have hit each other in the pit stop. So I wonder if both of them have got damage. I think they did. That's going to allow the likes of Brennan j yep. to increase that advantage. So I'm going to it. And Miami as well. That's just the danger of just staying out just a little bit longer. You just get struggle so much. Noah Jay's in as well. Ah, oh, this is costly for Jay. He had such a good start as well. Same with the likes of obviously Bunty. But unfortunately, their uh, streak of gaining position does come to an end. As we're going to see, I think a few Ferraris getting past as well, and maybe Tim Matz as well. It could be a danger getting out the points as. Uh, we're seeing actually Passe, who was, I think, 18th on the grid. He's up to, to eight, so he's gained 10 positions. Jaylou's going to try and do all he can to claim that advantage back. He's doing all his best. Well, he started last, and he's all, he made it into fifth place, and he's still all the way up into ninth again. So he, he's still pretty much the fast driver compared to some of the other drivers, so it's not over from yet as well. But the ones that pitted early, they pretty much where they started pretty much before they pitted. So brilliant stuff from them. Kirk up to third, Miami up to fourth, Cam up to fifth, Bunty, I think got away with damage just slightly because he's so far ahead of J. Luke now. Yeah, J. Luke with that damage as well. And well, the problem with that, of course, both Mercedes stayed out, which meant that Noah J double stacked behind his teammate who had a front wing change. So Noah J is now down to 14th. He's plummeted down the field because of his teammate's mistake. So, well, it's his own mistake as well for staying out behind his teammate. Tope is working his way back through the field quite nicely here. He is now up to 10th place. He just got past Knight and he got past Mats on the same lap as well. So Tope up into 10th and he's already having a run at J. Luke as Mats goes very wide in the background. But Tope here absolutely flying on his inter immediate ties is right up behind Jay Luke. Passe seeming to be struggling at the moment. He's now 5.2 seconds behind Maverick in front. Passe is not loving these intermediate conditions. He doesn't seem to have a lot of pace at all. He's got a queue of cars right behind him. That now also includes Luke who has caught this pack. So Topo Luke working their way back through the field. Luke looking at the back of Knight. This will be for the final spot in the points so far. Luke's got the inside line but Knight is slightly ahead. It breaks a bit later and Luke can't commit to the move. Luke has to back out. Stays 13th for the time being. It's all Constantinoing up a little bit. Brent, the fastest man on the track. Brent seemingly enjoying these intermediates much more than he was enjoying the wet tyres. It's now 2.6 seconds clear. And his lap times at the moment are four seconds quicker than they were on the wet. So it is very clear. It was very clearly intermediate conditions. J. Luke and Passe going side by side. J. Luke with a bit of a dive down the inside. But he gets the move down on Passe. And Tope capitalises as well. Passe drops two places from 8th to 10th. Yes, indeed. And I think, yeah, I think Brent is a little bit more comfortable on the Inters, more grip than the four wets, and the gap is starting to increase just a little bit more. So I wonder if we'll see Brent dominate in this wet stage of the race. But it's not going to be that long before it starts to dry up as well. It was very, very quick to turn from four wets to Inters. So I wonder if it's going to be exactly the same for dries. But you never know with this game. It is set to approximate, so it may not even dry up 
at all as Brent has just set an almighty fastest lap with a 126. I want to see actually J. Cole's fastest lap, a 126.6. So there are a tenth pretty much separates between two of them in terms of lap times. But with the way Brent approaches pit stop, that I think really, really helped him with, with the like, likes of his pit stop. And I think Recurrent's not that far behind either as well as we're starting to see more lap times being unfolded. I have to say, the top six are a beast of these wet conditions. Um, anyone lower than seventh, I would say, are, are struggling a little bit more. But um, we will see as, as, a, as the track gets lighter and lighter in terms of, of the wet, of course. But I, 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 I'm quite impressed with the moves that these drivers have been making in these wets. Who said you can't overtake gear? Well, these guys are definitely proving us wrong. Tobey almost got a move on J. Luke into Torre Vip, but he does not. J. Luke just about holding his own Tobey struggling on the exit of uh, five there so uh, that's not going to help him one bit but the ones that are going to be worrying is the one with penalties Bunty, Luke and RJ they're going to hope there's no safety car yeah, they're really going to hope for that one. Well, I think RJ may be hoping for one a bit further down. In 15th, of course, our joint championship leader, his only saving grace at the moment, is his joint championship leader in Tope is not having the best race either in 9th. So that is somewhat of a saving grace. But J. Cole, of course, third in the standings at the moment, running in second. So as it would stand right now, J. Cole would take the lead of the championship going into round four in Austria. I think proving as well as Luke goes for the move on night down the inside of turn 13, gets the move done and goes up into 12th position. I think proving that Passe was struggle is struggling in these wet conditions. He's two and a half seconds behind Topa J. Luke already after a lap and a half since he got overtaken. Passe in that Ferrari has clearly set that car up for the dry conditions. He is not enjoying the wet conditions at all and is just continuing to get hounded by Matt, who was right behind in the Alpha Tower. He maybe he's not too close enough for turn one. He can maybe think about a move at three if he can get close enough to the Ferrari, but at the moment can't quite do so. So yeah, kind of constituting up behind the Ferrari at the moment. J. Luke and Topa slowly closing in on Maverick, who is completely on his own yet again in seventh. But as has been the case so far this season, the Red Bulls struggle in qualifying, but in the races, they kind of quietly work their way through the carnage and get a solid top ten result. Cam get the moment in fifth and Maverick in seventh doing the same once again. Yeah, and some, you don't get points in qualifying, you get points in the race, and sometimes it, 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 sometimes people don't worry about their one lap pace and concentrate on the race, but you still got to qualify quite highly to get the good top 12 results anyway, so I have to say, good for Red Bull and the Constructors, obviously Cam before tonight, sitting in P6, and the Constructors on 15 points, joint with Recurrent, Mavic sitting in P8, so three point gap separating between the two of them, shows that they definitely deserve the promotion to this to this tier and showing that they could challenge the big guns even though they can't challenge the likes of obviously J. Cole and Brent yet when when they put their mind to it they could get some brilliant moves and actually Bunty set the fast lap of the race he's absolutely flying on those intermediate conditions and he could try and get past Cam in these next set of corners which could be hard to do and towards turn three now clips up by Apex he breaks just a little bit more in the wet. I don't know how these guys have managed to do it as we're seeing Luke go for a move um, into turn one on Passe quite comfortably actually in the Aston Martin after his drive. I have to say it's a great good comeback for our pole sitter Luke and he's up into 10th place still in the points as well but he still has a penalty looming under his belt so he's got a lot of work to do on that regard as well but I have to say Cam's gained eight places, Bunty up six. Maverick up 8, J. Luke up 11. Pretty much the top 8 have all game positions in this race. Same with the likes of Passe in 11, Matt in 12, and Knight in 13th. Noah J. has stayed exactly where he is. He's in 14th, and uh, he's probably been a, a mere race for him. It couldn't have gone better or worse because he qualified in 14th. Everybody else I've not mentioned has had a horrific race and gained quite a lot, a, lost quite a lot of positions. As Bunty into one of the hardest corners to ever take on the track. He goes past Cam up to fifth place. He's on a comeback too to try and close in on Miami. So Bunty showing that he's one of the fastest man on the track right now. Again past the Red Bull driver. But we'll see if Cam can fight back. He's not. Tope actually gets past J. Luke. I think J. Luke has gone wide a little bit. So I'm wondering if he's struggling a little bit. But this could get very tight actually into this roller coaster section. It is literally a roller coaster, as some drivers put it, in this um, LOE division. Turn one, they go. I don't think Jalen is going to go for it here. He is not. He backs off of it. So, nice battle in between the two of them. And uh, Tope doing the best out of the ones with the drive-through. 
And uh, I think it's going to be a good result regardless for Jay Luke because he, he's had some bad luck this season. But I'm not going to talk about it too much because we seem to jinx him quite a lot. But you're running order so far. Brent in the lead and he's gained another two seconds under J. Cole. So Brent, pretty much the best race out of anyone. Yeah, absolutely flying on the intermediate tyres at the moment is Brent Rekurik slowly closing in on the back of the Aston Martin of J. Cole, but it's still 2.3 seconds. They are six and a half seconds clear of Miami, who is completely on his own at the moment in fourth position, who's got no one behind him who's a threat, but can't keep up with the drivers in front. I don't think Kamke is going to be best pleased with that overtake from Bunty, really, at turn 13. It was a dive down the inside from a, quite a way back from Bunty, and he did kind of barge the Red Bull out of the way unfortunately so I think Kamke is very lucky to get away with seemingly no damage I think that may be a bit of a report though that was a, a bit of a late dive for him as to oh, as Maverick actually spun oh he spun the car just as we we're talking about turn 13 Kamke overtaken on the previous lap, and Maverick has dropped the car through 13 he continues on I don't know if he's got any damage or not I don't think he does I think he just spun he'll have a bit of grass on his tyres but he's now down tonight to make that 10th as Luke gets past but Maverick falling down the field Tope the fastest after the race now in seventh position but yeah maverick has been he's trying to come back at luke actually down towards turn number one he's got the inside line he's a little bit faster in a straight line is the red bull can he commit to the inside line he backs out of it at the last moment luke holds on to ninth maverick down to tenth after a spin it's not been a good couple of laps for the red bull drivers no nope, it's not i think every time we talk about them uh they just have a little bit of a nightmare a couple of corners so we won't say anything more i'm sorry red bull drivers <laughs> we seem to be doing commentators curses left right and center today but anyway they're still in point position, so what can you do? Knight, however, could go for a move into turn five at Torrey Bits. I have to say, Matt, close the door very, very nicely there just before you got to the corner saying, no, you're not going to get my 12th place. You're not going to get some points in this race. Fair play to Matt, but Knight has got a penalty anyway, so I wonder if he needs to fight just a little bit harder to try and get past Matt and also his teammate Passe as well, who started towards the back of the grid. And I think we're starting to get a bit of a quieter moment of this race. I feel spice things up when obviously the track gets drier. It's almost stopped raining. It's start the sun is starting to peep off just a little bit. Just it's, it is getting sunny, so the sun wants to come out today. It wants to be saying no, nope, you're not having any rain. And uh, we are going to be seeing, I think, in about five or ten laps time, the the drivers potentially going on to a different set of tyres. But the question is, what tyres will they go on to? We'll have to wait and see. It's Luke at increasing the gap to Maverick. Maverick is pushing the gap to Luke with his ERS. He's using his overtake, going on to the straight. No moves being made as uh, J. Luke is another one to be added to the penalty board right now. And yes, it is a quite a phase, but we could see some risks being taken before they make their pit stops on to the drives, or if they go on to the drives. They may be dry for a few laps and then get ready again, so will they be going on to the drives at all? We don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. The rain is very close to stopping. It looks like it's teetering on the edge at the moment. We'll wait and see when the droplets stop falling on these cars, but the rain is now very light. So we're not far away from possibly transferring over to slick compound tyres. Bunty, by the way, is closing in quite quickly on the back of Miami. It's 1.7 seconds. The gap now, Kamke's dropped 4.7 seconds back. So Bunty was definitely the faster of the two, but Kamke at the moment on his own. Tope's recovery back through the field after that drive-through penalty has been very strong so far. Of course, Luke has a penalty and had a spin, but Tope has worked his way through the pack cleanly and nicely he's now up into seventh position with no penalties on the board and is closing in on the back of cam k at a rate of knots so the williams man is doing his best to recover what he lost in the early phases of this race and of course could be potentially salving salvaging his championship lead as cam k is into the pits okay so this is our first stop then the rain has stopped cam k is in Mediums. is it for slick compound it is it's slick and it's a front wing change as well he's changing his front wing i think he did get slight damage after that contact with bunty medium compound tires that i think risk. that's slightly i think that's slightly too early from such a good position as well of, of sixth place in the field i don't think that was a risk he needed to take i think he forgot to select his tires i think when he got damage i think he was struggling with damage and realized that he probably had to pit anyway so he thought why not if he didn't get damage he probably would have appeared something similar to everybody else and we'll see his uh, lap times either fall Oof. on the cliff or you know as a Noah J's out that could be a Ooh. saving grade for Cam actually Noah J safety yep. car that I think that's just saved Cam's bacon there because it could I, I, I don't know because people will get a free pit stop in these in these uh 
work in these air conditions. So I think if he just stayed out just for one lap extra, he would have been fine. But Brent staying out, and we'll see what J. Cole does. It's still far too early, in my opinion, to go onto the slicks. He's in. Ooh, no, oh, no. that was a dummy. I, I, <laughs> I don't know if you're allowed to do that, but he, he is a league owner, after all, uh, for the PC side, at least. So, uh, yeah, um, he thinks he can make his own rules. But Kerrick stays out. My aunt, pretty much everyone's staying out. So, and uh, I'm just trying to see if Cam is gaining time, not by a lot. So, yeah, it, it is far too early. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ride on board with him at the moment. He's crawling through uh, turns 11 and 12 at the moment. I know it's safety car conditions, but he's sliding all over the place. And yeah, I think he's probably annoyed that he got damaged because he was forced to pit anyway. But J. Luke's in. J. Luke is in and Fresh inches. inches. So he thinks that the track is still not good enough for drives, which I agree with. But I think that strongly suggests to me that it's going to stay like this and then it's going to rain again. So we Possibly, don't know. Possibly, yeah. We don't, yeah, we really don't know at this point. That's what he's maybe thinking at this point in the race. Otherwise, I'd be a little bit surprised at the point of pitting at this point for a fresh set of Inters for when you were running in eighth position, why you, you would want to lose five places of track position for a fresh set of Inters. Why well, is coming for a fresh set of Inters? I think that makes sense plainly because he was running at the very back anyway. So he just needs some sort of advantage to get him back up up the field i think as well i wonder if we'll see maybe darry or someone do the same we'll keep an eye on the conditions but it's not drying out that quickly at all it stopped raining but it is not drying out the track is still very very wet at the moment so yeah i think maverick has jumped the gun here uh Kamke, sorry has jumped the gun here with the with the medium compound tire switch we'll see if it does dry off at any point during the safety car period but there's still a lot of spray so yeah this doesn't look like the right time what this does, though, of course, is close the pack up completely, and Brent will not be too happy about that. He had a near five-second lead over Jacob. It was looking very comfortable for Brent. What this does is bring Jacob back into it. Rekurik's wide up there as well. Miami's back in cont into contention. Bunt is up there, and probably most importantly, Tope has regained pretty much all of the on-track time that he lost with that drive-through. So he is now once again right in the mix. Same with Luke. Same with Luke as yeah. well. So I think those two, I think they were the two that I think probably jumped for joy when they saw safety car and that means they're back in this race. Luke I think was pretty much the most happiest because he's further down than everyone at the moment. So uh, yeah, we, we will see what happens because there was a bit of sun. There's not much sun now. We, we, we just don't know. To be honest, I wouldn't know what to do if I was them either. So to be honest, I think due to the fact that Cam is dropped. Yeah, he's gone in. He's gone into yeah. the pit four inches, I believe. Or would it be? Surely it's intermediate. Yeah, yeah it, it is. is inters. He realised, it probably his Jeff has told him, rain is imminent. Probably. Otherwise, he would not have come in. He would have pretty much braved the set of the medium compound of tyres. Or maybe he's just struggling in the likes of turn 8 with that elevation change. And the turn 11 and 12 as well. That's probably why. So, uh, he's going to... He, he was doing so well as well. He was in a very good position. He was in fifth place at one point. But... The strategy just didn't come to its own, but I think it didn't help that he got damaged, which forced him to pit anyway. So, what a shame for Cam, but he's going to hope that everyone else just falls by the race side. I believe he started 14th in, 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 in the start, so and he's going to be 16th now, so a few positions below where he started anyway. So, as long as he catches up, he could potentially still be back in this race, and... Uh, I thought I saw rain for a minute there once again, but it was just my imagination. But according to someone in the chat, it said rain in, in the 45 minute slot. So it's going to come right towards the end of the race here. But the safety car is going to be in for one more lap as we're waiting for about three drivers to catch up. And uh, good news for the likes of obviously RJ and J Luke. They could be back into this as well. And uh, J Luke is on fresh inter, so keep an eye on him. Keep an eye on wide wire as well. He's almost caught up to the safety car pack. Well, he did. And he's going he's into paid. the pit. I wonder if he's going to do the opposite to Cam and go on the drive. But again, I still think it's far too early for the drive, if not at all. So we'll see what the hash driver does. And I do see dry tyres. I Oh, my yeah. goodness. 
it's it's so on the bubble that they don't really know what to do at this point you've got to say i think the reason cam k came back in for inters was that he was so slow that he actually wasn't catching the safety car queue which was why he was so far back but yeah. if you look at the track conditions from cam k's pov that looks dry it's that dry. looks pretty dry to me so if white why can speed up and catch the back of the safety car pack here we, we will leave white why why he could throw himself into the lead of this race that's dry that is dry conditions white why, why i think has timed this perfectly that is the honestly probably one of the most perfectly timed pit stops we may ever see in league of europe because it is just like that in the in the cliff of the fingers it's gone dry and white why, why has got to catch the safety car queue now he's got to hope that cam k catches it as well safety cars in this lap so watch why, why really needs to catch the safety car now the only problem is of course he can't overtake cam k and cam k is struggling to catch the pack himself so if he can get onto them, White Y is going to breeze through this field. But these but guys will have to pit. These guys will have to pit. Surely. So White Y will probably be in the lead anyway. So He will. So to be honest, it doesn't matter if he does not catch up or not. He's caught anyway. He's yeah, caught he's... anyway. But we'll, we'll, we'll ride with Brent. So we'll ride with Brent. We'll see what he does. He'll be taking the safety car restart, but it is bone dry. They have surely got to come into the pit lane. Is no, Brent going to just dive into the pits? Is he going to just dart into the pit lane Surely. before we get going no. for the safety car restart he continues on oh no he's all oh, we break to the last moment to think about going into the pits and didn't do it none of them are in none of them are in Mats has come in Darry's come in that is it they've all stayed out on intermediate tires watch oh why we've got to keep an eye on the house here how quickly can he work his way through this pack he's past cam k already look how Bunty quickly spun. he is catching Oh, Bunty and Spam, they're all over the road here. Look at White Why Why on board with the Hasman. He is just carving his way through this field on those medium compound tires. Round the outside of RJ he goes. Down the inside of J Luke he goes. He is flying through this field, and only Mats and Darry decided to come in. What on earth are we seeing here? Mats and Darry have just given themselves a massive opportunity in this race as well. Why, why did no one else quicker? react? Why yeah, look at him. Quicker. He's got, he's got past. He was in, I think, thirteenth, and now up Oof. to a turn eight as well. Why, why, why? Driver of wow. the day so far, and he, it, yeah, it, if if I were the guys in front, I'll be worried for why, why, why right now because surely he got to pit. He's he's diving past these cars like there are mobile chicane at the moment this is insane this reminds me of a race Ooh. i did oh it's brent's off brent brent is off you could sh it shows that the conditions are not the best for him but this reminds me of a race i did in austria but the other way around where it was a safety car and everyone was pitting for drives i stayed on the intermediate tires and it proved that the inches were the best tires it's exactly the opposite and look why 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 he's gonna die they're staying out Jay Cole. Wow, why, why, why is your race lead after starting? It's raining again. Is it rain? Oh no, why, why, why? It's this raining. Is... What on earth? What on earth is happening? Why, why now needs to hope that this rain holds off for a good few laps so he can disappear up the road because he is so much faster than these drivers behind. The problem for these drivers on the intermediate conditions, because it is bone dry, they are burning these tyres out. They are absolutely killing these intermediate tyres, as Brent proved, by going off the road at the top of the hill. They've got to hope it rains quickly. Why, why has got to hope it doesn't rain for a long time. He's already four seconds up the road. He's flying. But look at that it's pretty much wet conditions already again it's coming down oh far quicker God. than we were maybe expecting we were just talking about white or why maybe calling this race perfectly it's now intermediate conditions again this what? weather change is so all over the place and j cole now is back in the best position in this race on those intermediate tires but how much damage have they done to those inters in those laps on the dry track have they killed those intermediate tires is j luke now technically on the best intermediate tires he's up past rj luke and Topa going side by side luke is trying to get the move done through turn number 14 around the outside of the williams man can he pull that off that'd be a lovely move if he can get that move done i think he can around the outside he's just going to get it done watch why he's back in the pit lane he's Aww. sped in the pit lane as well oh it's all fallen apart for white why but he's back in for a set of intermediate tires j cole now leads the race from recurric once again miami will be back up into third luke's fourth all of a sudden tope is now fifth passe is running with brent for sixth at the moment he's down the inside of the alpha tower can he get the move 
move down at turn number one. Yes, it can. Brent has to give way. Passe is up to sixth. Brent's down to seventh. But is, uh, is J. Luke on the best tyres? He's just hit Knight into turn three. That might have damaged his front wing. Knight's got the move done. Oh! And Knight's been spun out by Brent. Brent's race goes from amazing to utterly horrible. He's down to tenth and he's just spun the Ferrari out. What a race it is going to be. And Wide Why Why was on the perfect strategy. We were going to say he was going to win this race. I was expecting the race to come at lap 30. It came at lap 22, for Christ's sake, which I did say it was going to be unbidded. Well, that was why Cam decided nope, he wasn't going on the slicks because he, uh, he, he had the word from Jeff that rain was coming. So Cam made the right call, you know, for coming in yeah. on for fresh tyres. He's on the freshest tyres out of everybody not even J Luke and he's got no penalties so technically if the one if the drivers up front get punches Cam could be the net race leader of the race but I'm not going to say anything more because I jinxed him last time has RJ and J Luke going side by side into turn 13 there has RJ covers J Luke off as well and we're going to see Cam trying to make a similar move to J Luke they make a little bit of contact there heading towards the final few corners this has just been so brilliant as well. J. Luke and McCurick are just going to hope that their tyres just don't punch her at this stage. I'm just going to keep an eye as well on the tyre um, data as well because the mediums obviously last the same time as... Uh, no, the inters last the same time as the medium tyre, 17 laps. We are pretty much three or four laps before the, 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 the lifespan because obviously there was one safety car. So the ones on fresher tyres, they won't have to pit again. They're comfortable. The ones... They're on pretty much all the tyres, obviously, they're, since they're on the drive. They're going to be in absolute trouble, so I'm a bit worried for them. I literally don't know who's going to be winning this race. Every single driver I predicted was going to win this race is just falling by the wayside. Brent, I thought he was going to do well. Down in 10th. Luke could still be in there and get some decent points due to penalties behind, but he still got some penalties himself as well. Toe could be up there to get a good result, too. I just don't know what's going to happen at this stage. There could be a late safety car as well and the fact is could it be full wet at the end we just don't know at this point let's know your thoughts on who's going to win this race this is the most craziest portugal race let alone league race i've ever commentated on in my life it's such a bizarre weather shift in this race isn't it so all over the place and now it's completely shifted back to j cole's favor who leads this race from recurrent miami has got so much right behind him Luke and Tope right there Passe in 6th again is falling away from the cars in front he's now 3.6 seconds behind Tope and it's got RJ closing on in closing in on him at a vast rate of knots but of course RJ with two penalties at the moment Cam K like you say could be on the best tyres J Luke's coming he had a damaged front wing so he's going to come in and replace Aww. that Cam K could be on the best tyres like you say 11 well best part of 12 laps younger than everybody in front of him J Luke's, J -Luke's full got wet. full oh, wet no. Is it full wet conditions? No, it is not. There's no standing water on the track at all. It is not full wet conditions yet. It's still intermediate conditions. If these drivers in front are struggling on those intermediate tyres, especially with the two laps on a bone dry track that they drove them on, then they could puncture, like you say, or they may have to pit again for a fresh set. Cam K could be in an amazing position in this race. We don't know. I mean, at this point, I'm not going to predict anything because anything and everything that could have happened has happened in this race. I am so perplexed as to what is going on in this race. I mean, we were talking in one minute about Matt's making one of the best strategy calls. He's now 15th and nearly a lap down. So it's, 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 it's so completely up in the air. We haven't a clue how this one is going to turn out. Miami's still holding on to that third position with Luke and Tope right behind. This is definitely Luke and Tope's biggest challenge of the race so far when coming back through the field is Miami. But at the moment, they're nearly back on the podium having got the drive-through in the early phases. So it's a good recovery so far. Passe is a good recovery from the back of the field from 18th up to 6th, but really struggling on the intermediate tyres. I don't know if he's not running a setup or something, but in the wet conditions, Passe is atrociously slow. He's really, really slow. And RJ's caught him already and is so much faster in a straight line in that McLaren. Cam K is closing in as well. We've got a yellow flag in sector two. That is J Luke that's gone for a spin on those full wet tyres. Definitely not full wet conditions. Is RJ going to think about a move on pass into three? Not quite close enough to think about the move, but we've got another overtaking opportunity at turn five coming up. My, meanwhile, Watch Why Why has got the move done around the outside of night. No, not quite. They're side by side here. Are the two drivers fighting over 10th RJ. position? Watch Why? Always going for the move as well. Passe, both Ferraris under attack. RJ down the inside. Passe deciding not to fight it. He lets the McLaren through. Y2Y gets the move done on Knight as well. So both Ferraris losing a place at the same time. Passe down to 7th. Knight down to 11th. 
I just, I just have to say, I, I, I'm speechless at this point, Aiden. I'm very speechless. <laughs> I don't know where, 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 which is way it's going to go as well. Let's look at penalties as well because it could change massively. I don't know why Luke's on 10 seconds, but surely that could get removed. But I don't know the extent of that penalty. I'm not sure. So take that with a pinch of salt. RJ's on six. Brent's on three. White White Rise on five for speeding in the pit lane. Knight and Bunty on six. And Maverick, Darry and J Luke on three. Everybody else are completely clean. But I'm almost certain most people will be on two warnings already. So they've got to try and keep a penalty free to the end of this race. But just to point out as well, I did a race similar last season where it, it was uh, dry for a little bit. Then it was inters. Then it was four wets. And then it was inters again. And I managed to get those tyres, I think, 30 laps on those inters, but I was quite slow anyway, so it was to be expected. But they, they could make it towards the end of the race, but it's going to be a bit of a push right now. They've had got to be on good tyre management. If J. Cole gets those tyres, yet he's already looking up, look, into turn five. That's how he's struggling as much as well. You can see the ones on fresher tyres than him are starting to catch up rapidly. We're starting to see Cam... Trying to get past Passage to a bit. Now going to try. He's going to make it even harder for himself. He could try and get the move to turn six. and make a bit of contact again. Oh, he, he knows. He knows he's, a, he's the fastest man on track with those fresher tyres. He knows that Passe is struggling in the wet. Oh, I think he has to stay behind as well. But he's getting massively held up. He, he's in danger of not even catching up to RJ at this point as well. That is a danger, of course, but Rekuri is now on the back of J. Cole. I wonder if Rekuri the fastest man out of J. Cole and him as well at the moment. This could be the battle for the win or even the podium. No DRS, don't forget. We haven't had DRS at all this race. Yeah, we haven't had it at all, have we? It's been slightly up and down this race so far. By the way, that is a lap to J. Luke coming back through past <laughs> Cam K's car. J. Luke now a lap down, having been up in fifth place at one point. It's been a horror show of a race for J. Luke, sadly, but he's on a fresh set of intermediate tyres. Cam K can't get the move done on Passe. Passe got overtaken two laps ago as Miami now with a time penalty, and that puts Tope back into podium position in this race all of a sudden that is lovely stuff for Tope but he's not wanting to get it on penalties he's looking for a move on Luke maybe down towards five he's got a good run out of turn number four is he going to think about a dive down the inside of the Aston Martin can he be committed enough on the brakes no he can't can't go for the move he stays in fifth for the time being Passe got overtaken by RJ the best part of a lap and a half ago he's now five and a half seconds behind he is really really slow Cam K again going for the move at turn five is a bit more committed this time around but the tight line through the corner means he can't get the power down and Passe again holds the place they're being caught very quickly by White's YY now who's also on fresh tyres he's now up into ninth and is catching these two for the fight for seventh position at the moment so White's YY start to work his way back through the field one other interesting bit of news as well J. Cole leads but Rakurik is now under a second behind the Hasman is closing in is Rakurik maybe managing those intermediate tyres a little bit better and starting to hunt down the race leader I think Lecourt was not in the battle as much this race, whereas J. Cole has on those intermediate conditions. So that's probably why Lecourt is starting to push a little bit. And maybe he was saving a little bit compared to J. Cole at this moment in time. So don't be surprised that he's going on the attack at the moment because no matter what, he's going to be a net P2 because Tope's got to get past both Luke and Miami to try and catch up to Lecourt. And it's about, I think, two, three seconds, four seconds between their break between the two of them. So, pretty much, unless they make a mass mistake, these two are confirmed one and two, but who's going to get P1 and who's going to get P2? That is my question. Passe is dropping even more at the moment, and the battle for the points could is not really that tense at the moment, as Maverick is 15 seconds down. So, I think the, the, the order you're seeing at the moment are the order that they are going to be getting points in. And I'm just seeing who got fastest lap, because I think it's not going to change. Why, 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 being on those mediums, if he stays in ninth place or stays in the points, he will get an extra point for fastest lap just by being on the mediums uh, 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 in, in the safety car period. So that's kind of a cons consolation prize for why, 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 isn't it? 
Yeah, a little bit of a consolation prize, like you say, an extra point on the board. And he's now caught Cam K and Passe. So, and the rate in which Passe's been dropping, wouldn't be surprised if Watch for can get the move done and get the five second gap to Passe fairly quickly. Cam K's got the move done, but he is now out of penalty range to RJ. That's how much time he's lost. He's seven seconds back from mm. the McLaren now. Is him as Watch is going for the move at turn 13 on Passe. He's not waiting around. Gets the move done very cleanly. Nice overtake from Watch Y. And he's up into eighth. Passe down to ninth. Now, Brent will be the next person to possibly have a run at the Ferrari man and Knight's not too far behind either beyond that Passe will still score points but at the moment at least struggling for pace looks like he could drop outside of the top 10 five laps to go at the start of this lap four and a half in a, in a bit basically and Rakuric is still closing in the gap is now just under six tenths of a second Rakuric looking a little bit stronger at this point in the race although Rakuric has burnt pretty much all of his ERS to get there so he is banking on putting the pressure on J. Cole and forcing J. Cole into a mistake yeah uh, this is going to be an intense battle between these two as well obviously j cole looking for his second win in a row in the wet conditions we're looking for his first win of the season if j cole gets the win it will be our first winner who has won twice in this league um this season and don't forget j cole has not won in a few seasons so mm. he could be on for two wins in two races that will be insane but J. Cole has to work for it. McCurick has to work for it as well. We're seeing lots of other drivers like Toby has to work for it to try and potentially get into this fight for Pito. I think we're going to be on for an exciting finish as well. Make sure you stay tuned to the rest of it because this could get absolutely intense. This could be down to track position as to it could stay exactly as it is, but it could be down to penalties as well. If someone is on the cusp of getting a penalty, that could change things massively. Here comes Tobe then. Heading towards turn one, he's burning his ERS, so he's very keen to get past Lou. Again, he's not close enough, though. But he's going to get, I think he's going to get podium regardless. But he would rather want P3. As we've got a yellow flag, that is a red ball. Maverick. Uh, that is Maverick in turn eight. Turn eight is quite deadly around here, so not surprised for him. And he's now, well, he's, he's, he's definitely out of the points now. He's 24 seconds behind the nearest car of Bunty. And uh, I'm just trying to see, is he a lap down yet? No, not quite. Uh, the only person who's a lap down is J. Luke. So, l luckily, he's not a lap down either. As we're starting to see, Rakuric, he's five attempts. He's four down. One of J. Cole's made a bit of a mistake somewhere in turn A because Rakuric is flying on those intermediate conditions. It, oh, and it's raining so hard. And it's almost, there's some standing water in some parts of the track. Just look at the exit mm. to turn 11 and 12. It's full wet. It's definitely full wet. Would you gamble staying out? Or would you want to go on those four wet? I don't know. Oh, my goodness. This is shaping up to be an even crazy end to this race. It, it is definitely four wets now. You can't even argue about that. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, it's, it's definitely looking like four wet conditions. But with only three laps to go, surely you can't make up the 25 seconds it's worth for a pit stop in three laps. So... I think these guys are just going to have to risk it on these tyres and hope they don't make a mistake. Rakuric is closing in on the back of J. Cole. He seems to have a faster car in his straight line. Despite not having any ERS, it's all J. Cole whacks the curb at turn one. This is Rakuric's opportunity. Is he going to go for the move at turn three? He's not quite close enough. He thinks about the move, but he can't get the move done. Can he get the run, though? Up towards turn number five. J. Cole's starting to feel the pressure a little bit. Rakuric's got a solid run out the corner, but J. Cole's got the ERS to defend with. Can Rakuric go for the dive at turn five? No, he can't. He's sick sits back for the time being. He wasn't committed to either of the moves at three or at five. Doesn't go for the move. He's right on the back of the Aston, but maybe he should have committed to one of the moves and seen if it paid off. Yeah, he should have been. He should have been as well. He should have realised that Jay Cole made a mistake. Turn eight could have been his big chance as well coming up now. Does he go for it? No, he doesn't. Oh, my goodness. I, I, McCurick's a quicker car. McCurick's a quicker car than J. Cole right now. You can see where he's planting the car compared to J. Cole. His tyre management is absolutely spot on. I don't know how these tyres are getting past 23 laps because they're absolutely pushing. They're in a battle. They're on the wrong tyre, for goodness sake. And they have to stay out. There's no point pitting. So this is shaping up to be a Lando Norris in Russia, but less serious because you're on wets anyway. Well, inters rather than slicks. If you're on slicks now, then you would, I would question your life choice at the moment. Here comes Rakuric, then attempt two, as we've seen the uh, Alpha Tauri go, um, bottling it into turn one, but I'm gonna see Rakuric go for the run towards turn one, as Matt's got a 10 second time penalty. Don't know what's happened there, 
as they were seeing Matt was the one that spun. So has, uh, that's had not helped McGurick ever so slightly there. The ghost has definitely compromised his run a little bit. But past turn four, then elevation change is going to be ever so quickly. He's got to watch out for the standing water. He's low on the RS as well. Could he go for the run towards turn five in Torre Vip? J. Cole to the left hand side. He goes to try and defend off the Kirk, And that's helped him a little bit. YHYY gets past Cam. But Cam is going to try and defend off of YHYY into turn four, which he does. And to be honest, Cam is trying to defend, even though he's got a pen no penalties. But you never know, he could get a penalty too. So that's why he's trying to defend so hard as well. This is getting ever so tense right now. We're about to approach the final lap of this race. And the conditions are getting worse and worse right now. YHYY could get past Cam again and towards turn 8. YHYY is definitely the faster man out of Cam. <sighs> this, is, this is tense. <laughs> uh, I don't know which way yeah. it's going to go. But J. Cole, he's starting to pick up the pace just a little bit more now. Yeah, you can see all these drivers sliding about on the road. Knight's got the move done on Brent as well. So Brent now drops to 11th, having led so much of this race. He's only got two points in the bag at the moment. One lap to go. Can Rakurik beat J. Cole to this victory? Is J. Cole going to get two wins in a row, having not won in LOE for the best part of five seasons? Can he hold on for a second win in a row? Or can Rakurik get his first win in a couple of seasons as well? We've got a yellow flag in sector one. That's Darry that's gone off the road at that point. He is nearly a lap down at this point in the race as well. He's really, really struggling at this point in the race. Rakurik isn't close enough for a move at turn five. Maybe he should have gone for one of those moves a few laps ago. He was close enough to have the opportunity on lap 31. He didn't go for either of the moves. That could have cost him the opportunity to win this race. He's got to hope that J. Carl makes a mistake on this final lap. We'll ride with these two for the rest of the lap and see what happens. Turn 8, obviously a pressure point for these tyres in these conditions. J. Carl seems to hold the car nicely through turn 8. Rakurik a little bit faster, but again, just not close enough to think about a move. Can he take a different line into turn 10 and 11? No, he follows the line as Brent now gets another penalty. Rakurik is so much faster, but in his attempt to try and keep it clean, he's maybe kept it too clean and not gone for the moves. J. Cole's just holding on. Rakurik is basically pushing him through these last few corners. It's going to have to be a mistake from J. Cole in either of the last two corners of the lap for Rakurik to pick up the win here. I think J. Cole's done enough. We've just got to see him through this final corner. It looks like it's going to be, again, in changeable conditions two race victories in a row for J. Cole as he rounds the final corner it was so close to the end but J. Cole takes another victory this season for Rakurik who misses out by three tenths of a second Miami will cross third on the road but Tope will get third on penalties another podium make that three podiums out of three for Tope this season after a drive through penalty for a jump start recovering to third Miami fourth ahead of Luke RJ somehow having been at the back of the field for the whole race ends up sixth Cam K will end up 7th with YHYY's penalty. Passe jumps YHYY, so he gets up into 8th. Knight will round off the top 10, I believe. He crosses the line in 10th position. Brent will be behind, but he's got two penalties. He will stay in 11th. And Bunty will round off the points. Finishes then. Well, we went into that race in full wet conditions thinking it could have been quite boring at the start. That was anything but. I think we must have had maybe 10 or 15 different race leaders at that point in that race. That was absolutely crazy. And in the end, again in changeable conditions, J. Cole shines. Yeah, very impressed with J. Cole. And this does mean, though, with J. Cole's win... In this race, as I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add all the results for the top three at least because uh, those are the ones that matter. J Cole by two points over Tope is leading the championship. J Cole's 50 points compared to Tope's 48 points. That's how close it is, and it just shows that Tope has been consistent all season. That drive through, he, he just he just never gave up. He never gave up. He thought his race was over. That safety car helped him. He was on the right strategy as well. J Cole. That was a bit too close for comfort. His race win was dominant last week. He definitely had to work for it this week. And I have to say, this race win was a little bit more impressive this week than last week because he was able to hold the curry for so long. We won't be speaking to all three of them in the driver interviews. And I'm sure um, we're going to have a slight happy chat uh, in the core in a second as uh, he probably was not expecting the race win today. He, he got pole last week. He did not get pole this week. He started fourth. So it just goes to show 
You don't need to start pole to take the win. The man who started pole managed fifth, but he did have a drive through, so good recovery from him. So, so many drivers of the day. I, I, I don't know who to pick, but Jacob, a brilliant and deserving winner, but I have to say, recurring. He gave it his all. He was a faster man on trap, but it just showed the trap position was key in the final few laps. Yeah, it really was, wasn't it? In the end, J. Cole then, the winner of the race with Rukuric on the pony for the second race in a row. It's actually the same top three that we had last time out. Unbelievable, isn't it? But it's just Topin Rukuric swapped. It's the same podium sitters as last time out. So J. Cole Rukuric and Top your top three. Miami is first race of the season in fourth, a solid race for him ahead of Luke and RJ, fifth and sixth. Cam K in seventh ahead of Passe. White Hawaii, who will get the point for the fastest lap and Knight in the top ten. Brent, who led so much of this race, ends up 11th. And Bunty, the final point scorer in 12th. Then it's Maverick. Dari and Jay Luke uh, uh, and Tim Atz are the finishers for the race. Noah Jay, Amati and Rex all crashing out in the slippy conditions in this race. My oh my, what an up and down race. I think you've got to feel maybe for Brent though. Brent, you've got to say on paper today, Brent was easily the fastest person on track, but just couldn't cope with the changing conditions. The tyres were overheating far quicker for him than they were for anybody else. He just couldn't change with it. He just couldn't keep up with the, the changing conditions and it cost him cost him a good result today yeah and i did say i did say to the drivers that they have to learn from their mistakes from last week because it was changeable conditions last week too but it was a little bit more crazier this week i have to say as we are going to try and get um our top three for uh an interview as i uh, learn how to spell thank you very much but we just we just got two crazy races in a row we well D3, I have to say, is probably the most unpredictable division in LOE because we've had two races in a row where it's been wet for most of it. And we only had one dry race and that was that was Imola. So I have to say, D3 is, uh, has done a pretty good job this season. And I wonder how we're going to fare when we head to Austria next week because Austria always is a banger in terms of league racing. And I am, I am looking forward to it as a... Um, I, I'll, I will just get the top three in, excuse me, but who is your driver of the day today? It's hard to say really, isn't it, who the driver of the day is. You can pick pretty much any driver for, for specific reasons for the driver of the day, but oh, it is really, really hard to say who is the top driver of the day today, but I'm going to have to give it to J. Cole, I think, for the second race in a row. Held off the pressure of Rukuric at the end, was consistent all the way through. Unlike Brent, was able to manage the changeable conditions, pitted at the right times, and had a stunning race yet again. So, yeah, brilliant drive from him. Rukuric, again, right up there as well, shows that despite missing the first race of the season, he is well in this championship battle as well. So that is really, really great to see. We'll get a quick word in with our top three, hopefully, of course, well, me and Jess will be having to head off fairly shortly, so we may only get time to talk to one or two of these drivers, sadly. But yeah, yeah another, we'll just, another we'll crazy just race. With, we'll just sit with the uh, we'll just sit with Jay Cole and Rukeric, I think, for today. Sorry, Tope. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, yeah, that seems to be the case. We'll hopefully get those two in, but in the meantime, Jess, who are you going to give driver of the day to? Oh, well, I have to. You gave it to Jay Cole. I'm going to have to give it to Rukeric because. He was looking so uncomfortable in, in the four whites and Jay Cole was dominating, but he was able to push it to him towards the end. He couldn't get it done on the final few laps, but he couldn't. But starting from eighth on the grid and finishing second in these conditions, I have to give it to him. And uh, speaking of the devil, he's, in, he, he's uh, one of the drivers that has joined right now. So uh, uh, that, that, that's, uh, that, that, that's good to see. Well, uh, I'll let you uh, speak to the drivers now before we uh, have to head off for our, our races. Yeah, we'll, we'll get these ones done nice and quickly. We'll have a chat with our top two then. And J. Cole, welcome back to the party. I said on stream, it's been, well, four seasons since your last win. And now you've got two in a row in <laughs> fairly similar conditions. So how was that what, How was that risk from your side of things? Oh, uh, I, I, I don't know how to describe it, to be honest with you. It was <laughs> extremely tricky. But uh, at the same time, I do enjoy driving in the wet. Like as I said from last week, and mm. when I saw it, it was gonna be a wet race in Portimao tonight, I was I was very happy. But when I saw it go from wet to dry to wet, I was <laughs> I was more shocked. But <laughs> I, I, in the end, I'm, I'm just very happy how it went out. And yeah, it, fair play to Rick. It was so so close. Yeah, it was really really close. Talk us through a little bit about that dry stint as well. Of course, you lost the lead briefly to YHYY, the other Haas car who took the lead, who was on the, the medium compound tyres. Did it ever cross your mind about pitting for the slick tyres, or were you aware that the rain was coming in a few laps time and you just wanted to hold on for as long as possible on those inters? Well, 
I've actually got to thank Larkin for this one because uh, it was <laughs> going to be uh, I was going to go in and go for tries and uh, I saw obviously the progress that White Tri-Wire was making and that he got past me and at one point I was thinking yeah I'm going to go straight in and just change for um, slick tyres but when I thought the rain was coming as well he just said just stay out it's best just to stay out and I did and it kind of paid off because if, if I would have come in on that lap then I would have well I don't think I would have won at all yeah, possibly could have dropped right down to the back of the field then. And just quickly as well, talk us through that battle at the end with Rukuric. Of course, incredibly close. You probably would say that Rukuric out of the two, you seem to be the faster at the end, but you did a great job holding off. How was it to defend against Rukuric in basically full wet conditions at the very end? Yeah, that was difficult. I saw that he was catching up for living like the last five laps. And I was just hoping that yeah, just in that final lap, I was just going to you know just keep it focused. Uh, when Timmons decided to rejoin the track at the final corner, it did shake me up a bit. But, <laughs> um, no, I got there in the end, and it was a very good battle with Rick, and I said, I, I said it to him in the Discord as well. If, if this is what is to come uh, for this season, then, I, I honestly, I, let's make this a very good championship battle. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a great championship battle. Of course, you take the lead of the championship after this race by two points over Tope. So... Um, yeah, really exciting championship so far, even after three rounds. Jess, have you got anything you'd like to ask? Well, I think you pretty much uh, nicked all my questions, but uh, <laughs> are you going to make it free for free next week, or uh, are you just going to um, probably hope for maybe a top five finish? Because you're on a roll at the moment. Uh, Austria, I would say, is one of our best tracks as well. But if I do win, I'll probably end up going up to Division 2. So I might have to just kind of uh, keep it on the low ground <laughs> a little bit. But uh, no, on, on a serious note, I'm hoping that I can try and get it free for free. But we'll see. If, mm. if it's like today, then I've probably got a good chance. But if it's full dry, there, there's so many other people in that grid that can win that. So, mm. uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. It, it, it just see how it plays out. Yeah, we'll see how that one plays out. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you so much, J. Cole, for joining us. And congrats on another win this season. We'll see if you can keep it up this time next week. We'll move on to our second place finisher. And for the second week in a row, again on the podium, a lot closer to the win this time out, but just not able to do it. Rick Eric, how was that from your side of things? Uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I was hoping for rain, and I did come. And uh, I just had a lot of fun. And the last five laps... I was really, really trying to push him, uh, Jayco, into a mistake. <laughs> um, and I saw his uh, rear going super, super happy a couple of exits. And uh, mm. I tried to push, and then my rears just started to go. And uh, I could have done a stupid move, uh, like late break, and uh, just push myself. But uh, I, I, wanted, I wanted to be fair, fair and close and clean. But yeah, it was course. fun. Yeah, of course, that's, that's what you're known for as well, being a fair and clean driver, and that showed again once again tonight. I think we'll just quickly wrap up with one final question for you. Austria, this time next week, you've had success in Austria in the past. I've commented of you having success at Austria in the past. How are you feeling about the track? Is it somewhere you think you can maybe pick up that win? Um, maybe. Who, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think it was the race where uh, you commented it. Uh, you started like last or something and finished mm. third. Wow. Yes, a really good, really good one. But last season, my only time penalty of the whole season came in Austria, so we'll see. We'll wait and see. Well, that's a, that's a record, isn't it? Having no time penalties for a season. We'll see. <laughs> You're on your way there at the moment, so we'll see maybe if you can hold that one up. But yeah, congratulations on a second place finish today. I think we're going to wrap up the stream now because we've got to go and head off to our respective divisions. Jess, any final words from you, though, before we finish off? <sighs> I'm, I'm, I'm still speechless after what happened. It was a crazy race. We both didn't know what was going to happen. We both didn't know what was going to be the right tyre. Crazy, crazy race. And uh, let's just hope our races are not even like that when we when we do when we go into <laughs> our divisions. Just please, because <laughs> I'm I'm just, I'm just, just sweating even though I, I haven't I haven't raced yet. So <laughs> yeah. Please, I, I don't want anything like that. I'd be far too stressful. But yeah, thank you to everybody that's tuned in to the stream tonight. Tune in in about 10 minutes' time for Divisions 2 and 5. And we'll be back along with Divisions 1 and 4 at 6.30 at 6 next Saturday. But for myself and Jess, it is thank you very much for joining us once again. And we'll see you in a week's time. Goodbye. Bye.